that really in the Bible? You live in a world where everyone has an opinion about the Bible. Of what values are your beliefs if they are not clearly found in the pages of your Bible? The question we must ask is, are your opinions and beliefs really found in the Bible? Hello, I'm David Freeman with Is That Really in the Bible? Question, is divorce the answer? Is divorce the answer? Is that really in the Bible? You know, they say that 50% of marriages will end in a divorce. And you think about that, you know, okay, here's a, a great expectant day that, you know, we're, we're, we're going to get married. And it's like flipping a coin. Heads you win, tails you lose. That's the chance that two people take. And I wonder, is there any other way to proof, you know, to, to make for sure? Is there anything that we could do that would make a marriage work? And I think there is, and what I'm gonna tell you today, if, if you've been through a divorce or a bad relationship, some of the stuff I'm gonna say today is gonna be hard to accept. I'm gonna offer you a lot of correction. And, or if you're thinking about getting married, this message could save or produce a very great relationship, what I'm going to tell you today. I'm going to tell you some things that maybe you've never thought about in a relationship as to why God created this institution of marriage. But is divorce the only answer? You know, I mentioned that they say that, you know, when you first get married, there's a 50% chance that it will end with a divorce. They say that the second marriage, it actually goes up higher to over 60% chance. And they say that it, only in the third marriage does it actually come down below 50%. But is the only answer to a bad marriage divorce? Now there was a day when the Pharisees wanted to know, they asked this question, they, asked, they said, why did, they're asking Jesus this, they said, well, why did Moses command to give a bill of divorcement and to put her away? They wanted to know, why all this divorce? Why did Moses say that you could divorce your wife and give her a bill of divorcement? They were asking Jesus this question. And probably what they wanted to know is, well, why? Why all the divorce? Why do so many relationships uh, break up? And this is what Jesus' answer, what his answer was. Let's take a, let's take a look at this. In uh, Matthew 19 and verse 8, he said to them, Moses, for your hardness of heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been so. In other words, from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, God's original intent was one man, one woman, for life, forever, until death separated them. That was God's original intent. Uh, his intent was not to divorce. But he says something very strange. He said, because of the hardness of your heart, you know, Moses allowed you to put away your wives. Well, what is this hardness of heart? Uh, you don't have a hard heart, do you? I mean, if your mate comes to you and tries to correct you, instruct you, show you your blind side, you don't reject that, do you? You don't say, I'm not listening to her, do you? Do you have a hard heart? Now, I want to go back to the very beginning and just take a look at, you know, I mean, think about it. Is relationships that, is it really that difficult to find a person? I mean, to, to find a mate? Now, you would think so. I mean, you would think it's the most difficult thing in the world. With all of the internet dating services, I mean, you would think the hardest thing in the world to do is to find a member of the opposite sex. Well, listen, I mean, some of this stuff I think is just ridiculous. Listen, first off, if you want to find a mate, you're going to have to, you can't be a hermit and find a mate. You're going to have to get out in public. You're going to have to meet some people. You're going to have to meet the opposite sex. You're going to have to go where people are at. You can start by going to church, you know, but you're going to have to meet people. You're going to have to expose yourself to other people. That's how, you know, the magic occurs. That's how the wow factor occurs. You know, two people meet each other and they kick off and they, 
They just, something clicks, something happens, something spiritual happens. Now, I want to go back to the beginning, and you know, God had created Eve, and then he, uh, he, he created Eve, and he, he said, Adam, look over there, there's Eve. And I imagine the first words out of Adam's mouth was, wow. It's what I call the wow factor. Have you ever been wowed? You know, all the books on romance could be summed up in one word, wow, man, whoo. You know, I believe, let me tell you, I believe and love at first sight. The first time I saw my wife, and we've been married, I think, 27 years now, but the first time I saw her at school, you know, it was the wow factor. And I knew, and I knew that I knew that, that you know, there's not a lot of things I know absolutely for sure, but this was one of them. I knew that was the right one for me. And I dated other girls, but there was never the wow factor. Yeah, I believe it, love it for a sight. But I believe that something spiritual is going on when that wow factor happens and God connects two people together. I think it's something beyond what we normally think about. And you know, it's sort of sad for two people to have that wow factor happen to them. You know, two people meet and they're really in love. And to later think that it was all a big mistake, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure about that. I'm beginning to wonder if the wow factor wasn't, in reality, divine intervention by God, the wow factor. You know, Adam didn't say when, when, when God presented Adam with Eve, Adam didn't say, huh, oh boy, not interested, Lord. Or let, let me see 500 more. Or uh, I, you know, I just can't find, I just can't seem to find the right one. Or show me some men. That's enough to make you want to throw up, isn't it? But we seem to be confused as a society, indeed. But, or, you know, let me see the animals again, you know. Reminds me of something I, I, I heard a long time ago. It said, the more people I meet, the more I like my dog. And I can relate to that, by the way. But, you know, again, we come back to this wow factor, that the wow factor is actually, could be divine intervention by God. That is God connecting two people together. Now, what causes people to divorce? What causes, you know, arguments and fights and people to start, you know, not getting along? Well, I think, you know, we go back to the beginning, I think, of, of Adam, you know, well, well, God, Eve just pointed out my weakness, and I don't like her anymore. And God, Eve just said I'm acting like a two-year-old, and I want a divorce. And of course, Eve probably said, well, well, God, Adam just said I'm fat. He just called me fat. He didn't say my dress makes me look fat. He said my fat makes me look fat. And I don't like you, Adam, no more, and I want a divorce. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Now, you know, what's fascinating is this. All of these things could be true in a relationship. The guy may be acting like a two-year-old. He may have certain weakness. The wife may be fat. In other words, every one of these may be actual truths. But you know, the bad thing about it is that two people, we often have our blind side. And we're not willing to see those blind sides. We need some help understanding the blind side. You know, there's a truth in most marriages that is really fascinating. You, you know, two people, that's one of the things, you know, if you want to see truth, often you can find truth in, in a marital relationship. There's a reality found in most marriages. You know, reality in all its ugliness. I mean, they get down to the nitty-gritty to what is really real. They know each other. They know each other's weaknesses. They know each other's strengths, you know. And, and yet, we come to this, scripture where it says, because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to put away your wife. Could there be something in you that you're just not willing to face up to? You can't take that correction that comes from your mate. And what is this hardness of the heart? Surely that couldn't be a, surely that's not talking to you, is it? You wouldn't have a hard heart, would you? Why, no, no, not me, never. You see, this is what I believe. I believe that all of us have a blind side. And that the reason God connects people together 
is to reveal each other's blind side. You see, a blind side, the reason they call it a blind side is because you don't see it. And you will go to your grave not seeing it. And in order to see the blind side, God connects through the wow factor, connects two people together, husband and wife. It's what, it's what I call marriage dynamics. The word dynamics means the forces that tend to produce change in any situation or sphere of existence. You see, marriage changes people. You know that? Now, I used to believe something that I no longer believe. There was an idea that, well, you know, you should never marry a person expecting to change that person. You know, you got this bum, he'll always be a bum. You got this sorry, you know, he won't work and he'll never work. And, but I, I disagree with that now because I believe that the very purpose from God's perspective is to change people. That's why God connects two people together husband and wife, is to get them to see each other's blind side and to change them. Marriage changes people. It's supposed to. Yeah, it's supposed to. You see, I am a much better person because I am married than if I were single. If I were single by now, I would probably have made a complete fool of myself. I would probably be in prison or something. But because I am married, I am a much better person than I would be if I were single, provided that you humbly listen and accept correction that comes from your mate. You know, you ever heard this one? I, you know, I just want somebody to love me just the way I am. Oh, dear. I just want somebody to love me just the way. You know, that was a religious song. Just as I am without one plea. Well, yeah, I understand. We come to God just as we are. We have no choice over that. But don't you kid yourself and thinking that you're going to stay just the way you are. It's called conversion. When's the last time you heard that word? Conversion in church. Conversion. Conversion is not about staying just the way you are. It's about change. And I, you know, I think of this pitiful statement. I just want somebody to love me just the way I am. And it's, what is it saying? It's saying I am not willing to change a thing about me. It will be a cold day in hell when I do change anything about me. The statement I want somebody just to love me the way I am is an, an acknowledgement of the hardness of the heart. That's what it is. It's saying, I'm not willing to change. I'm not going to change. And what do people do? Well, they get something called a divorce when that occurs. Huh. You know, there's a story about a little boy, about a nine-year-old boy. He's upstairs crying in his room. His mother comes in there, and there's a thunderstorm going on. He's scared. He's scared. The little boy's scared. And the mother says, well, you just need to, you know, you need to pray to God. And the little boy said, well, I... I need a God with skin on him. <clears throat> yeah, I need a God with skin on him. You see, in, in marriage, you have a partner with skin. You have a partner with skin that can reach out and touch you and say, you're full of it. I would tell you what you're full of, but I can't do it on this program. But you're full of it. Yeah, that's what married couples do, you know. They don't kid around mince words or anything like that. They're real. That's a real partner you're with there. That's a real human being that God has put you with. It is a divine intervention of God's grace connecting two people up through the wow factor, two people to reveal each other's blind side. That's not just happenstance. That's not just coincidence. That's real God intervention in your life connecting you up. You know, the uh, I think it was Laura Bush told the story <clears throat> right after 9-11, and you probably remember this, that George Bush, after the terrorist attack, got on television and said, you know, out in the Wild West, they had this saying, want it, dead or alive. And a uh, pretty powerful statement, by the way, I like that, but Laura tells the story of going back to George, and, and she called him Bushy, I guess that's his nickname, Bushy, you know, she said, now Bushy, so you're getting a little bit cocky there. You know, you're in front of the whole American public, you know. 
and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that, and you're getting a little bit cocky, and she offered him correction. She's, she's telling this story. And, uh, of course, a week later, he divorced his wife. And I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but that's sort of how it happens, you know. Uh, it's how it happens. Now, here, here's, here's the thing to understand. If you're honest with yourself, and that's a joke. I'm just kidding. No, no, if you're honest with yourself, and very few of us are, God blesses you with a mate that encourages that honesty. If you're dishonest with yourself, and 99.9% .9 of us are, God blesses you with a mate that reveals your dishonesty. Okay? Either way, God blesses. In either one of these relationships, it is a blessing from God. You see. Now, I know there are all kinds of reasons people get a divorce. Uh, I, I think sometimes, you know, uh, one of the things that could cause a divorce, uh, I think when two unbelievers get married, I would like to think that two believers have a greater chance of successful marriage, although some of the statistics that I'm hearing says there's not much difference between unbelievers and believers when it comes to the divorce rate. What does that tell you? It tells you our religion is not working. That's what it tells you. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a put down. That's a disgrace in God Almighty's face to say that Christians have no better chance of surviving a marriage than unbelievers. That's pitiful. Boy, we need to repent on our face because of that one. I mean, we can't even take a blessing from God and get it right, for pity's sake. Well, there's all kinds of reasons for divorce. I think, I think sometimes people just, they just, they didn't know each other. You know, they dated for a week or two weeks, shotgun wedding, let's get married. And, you know, common sense tells you that's not going to work. You've got to know a person. You can't spend a week or two weeks together and get married. You should have known better than that. I think another reason uh, people get a divorce is because of lack of maturity. Two people get together, maybe at a young age, and they begin to ha enter, they enter into a sexual relationship very quickly. And the blinders come down over the eyes, and it's basically what's referred to as genital bonding. Uh, what they're in love with is each other's genitals, and they think it's love. My mother says, don't say that. My mother tells me, you know, in church, she says, don't, 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 don't say that. Don't say those words, you know. But hey, you hear it, you know, you hear it out in the world, might as well hear it in here. But anyway. So the blinders come down on the eyes, and they think it's love. What's well, not love? And then after they get married, they find out they didn't even know the person because the focus was on something else, sexuality, and they didn't even know each other. So I think that's another reason for a divorce. Uh, fornication is the one legitimate excuse that Jesus gave for a divorce. And fornication and basically is unfaithfulness, sexual immorality. Your partner was unfaithful. Jesus said, okay, that's a legitimate reason for a divorce. But look, listen, understand something. I don't care if you've been married five times. The sin of divorce can be forgiven. It's no different than any other sin that's out there. All sins, including the sin of divorce, can be forgiven, and that's a good thing. Now, but think about it. Could it be that there are no such thing as bad marriages? Just dishonest people unwilling to face the truth about themselves. And I wonder, when a person walks away from a partner in a divorce, if they have not walked away from ever discovering the truth about themselves. They've walked away from that blind side. They were unwilling to face the blind side about themselves. And they have walked away from the possibility of ever discovering the truth about themselves. You know, show me a person that's been through three divorce, and I'll show you a person unwilling to face the truth about himself or herself. Yeah, that's right, the blind side. In fact, if I were single again and dating, you know, I would be very skeptic of marrying a person who had been divorced. At least I would have to know from this person who had been divorced, I'd have to say, okay, what were you un unwilling to face about yourself? What truths are you unwilling to see about yourself? What, you know, you're, you have a blind side and you're not willing to, to accept it. 
I would at least have to know that. And it might be a good idea if, if you've been through a divorce, you know, what was your former husband and wife trying to show you? What were they trying to reveal about your blind side that you were totally unwilling to accept as correction? Remember, Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart, God allowed you, no, excuse me, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives because of the hardness of the heart. Well, that hardness is something that we really have to identify and deal with. And that's what I'm trying to do in this message. You know, people think, well, I just can't, you know, I just can't find the right mate. I just can't find the right mate. I don't know about that. I, I begin, I'm, I'm beginning to, to see probably the first time you were wowed that was the right mate. No, it, it's, it's because people hate being shown the truth about themselves is one of the main reasons, I think, that causes divorce and, and fights among husband and wife. You know, from God's perspective, there's more to marriage than repopulating the earth or having children. It's more to marriage than just companionship. It's more to marriage than just sexuality. The marriage institution is the building ground for character formation. It really, and that's what we overlook in marriage. We overlook the fact that God connects two people up together. He connects them together to reveal each other's blind side. And we have this illusion that, well, marriage is just supposed to be bliss. A blissful experience of just, oh, just, <clears throat> no, it's that too, but also God connects. It's about building character within each other. And each other, we help one another by seeing each other's blind side. We help each other in this relationship to build the necessary character that is needed in you, in me. You know, in Matthew 19, in verse uh, 5, it says this. Jesus said, and, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Notice the two shall be one flesh. Marriage is a divine institution that enables two people to achieve real conversion. Marriage is like a text workbook that if you stick to it, now that's a big if, if you stick to it, will lead you to a oneness, a oneness in understanding yourself. A oneness in understanding yourself. For this call shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And you know, and you know it's funny. When we leave home, you know, we think of home that well, I've been reared by my parents. I've been taught a set of principles. You know, and we think we know a lot. We think, well, yeah, I'm smart. I, I know everything I need to know. And I'm going to leave home, and I'm going to get married, and I'm going to cleave into my wife, and, and the learning process is over. Yeah, right. No. No, the discovery process of understanding yourself begins when you say, I do. Yeah, that's right. It begins when you say, I do. Now, maybe you have a deceased husband or wife. just want you to do some thinking here. I want you to think back to that relationship and just ask yourself, okay, that husband or wife, what, what were they trying to show me about my blind side? That maybe at the time you were unwilling to admit to. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Maybe you've been through several divorces. I want you to ask yourself the same question. What truth about myself were they trying to get me to see? What were they trying to reveal about my blind side that I was totally unwilling to face up to? Just think about it. I'm just asking you to think about that. Just think about that. Now, if you are married and you've been together for quite some time now, I want you to do something. and I want you to hold each other's hands. I don't know if your mate is there or your husband is at work or whatever, but if you are together, I want you to do something. Gra reach over and grab that person's hand. And I want to say a, sort of a blessing over you that uh, because I think, you know, real marriage, if you understand what it's all about, you realize it's something more going on 
than meets the eye. Listen to these words. This person whose hand I now hold is a guiding light to the truth. The truth I need to understand myself. I will not be able to hold this person's hand indefinitely, not in this physical life. Let me hold on tight. And when the truth about myself is hard to accept, let me not be a fool and walk away. The wow factor that occurred when we first met was not a mistake. It was a divine intervention by God that would enable me to build the godly character needed for the kingdom of God. Oh, uh, maybe you didn't realize what you got yourself into when you said I do. Maybe no one ever told you that you had a blind side and that your partner would help discover that blind side and you would help your partner to discover that blind side. Maybe you were never told the true meaning of marriage and what it's all about, what it's really all about, that it is a divine institution created for building godly character, that you can come to see the truth about yourself. And sometimes, yes, sometimes that truth about myself is not easy to accept from my partner. And sometimes we spend too much time thinking about how wonderful this relationship ought to be and how happy I ought to be and we're fighting and we're fussing. Hey, get used to it. Get used to it. It's only temporary. And I'll tell you what will save you a lot of heartache is to humble yourself, to listen to your mate, and to think about what I just told you about your blind side and to work through the correction that each other gives and together hold on tight to each other's hand. Because as I said, you will not hold that person's hands forever, not in this physical life. Marriage is a great blessing. And that's what's really in your Bible. If you would like a free DVD recording of this program that you can share with friends and loved ones, write to Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. That's Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. And be sure to mention the title of this program,